Hi, I'm Dr. May Seibel, editor of My Menopause Magazine. I've just returned from Dallas, Texas and the annual meeting of the North American Menopause Society and I had an interview with Dr. Victor Henderson of Stanford University and in this discussion you're going to learn what things you're doing that can contribute to Alzheimer's disease and what things you can do to prevent it. So let me begin just by asking you your name. Victor Henderson. And your position is? Um, I'm professor of health research and policy and neurology at Stanford University. And I just heard this gentleman give one fantastic talk about the impact of many things that we do on the potential for having Alzheimer's disease, something that I think everybody worries about. And I wonder if you could say, first of all, Alzheimer's disease affects how many people? It depends on where you read but probably the lifetime risk is 15% or more, maybe as high as 40% for people who live to ripe old age. There are an estimated 5 million people in the U.S. have Alzheimer's disease, so it's really an important disorder. Well, it certainly is, and it certainly is something that ruins the quality of your life. But the thing that you said is that while we can't change our genes, there were a couple of things that we might have some potential to impact. Well, let me begin by emphasizing the word potential because the data behind a lot of the things that make good sense, really those data aren't quite as strong as we'd like it to be based more on observational data and animal research rather than clinical trial, trial data. But it includes things like physical activity, mental activity, paying attention to cardiovascular risk factors, nutrition perhaps, uh, a variety of things along those lines are thought to be important in reducing one's risk of developing dementia or Alzheimer's disease. So actually getting out and doing a certain amount of activity every week, you talked about some numbers. The literature supports aerobic activity as being risk reducing for Alzheimer's disease and the possible mechanism, there's several possible mechanisms, but includes um, changes that might have effect in brain structure, might have effect in some of the biochemical pathways implicated in Alzheimer's disease. This is associated with aerobic activity and the recommendations I use are those that came from a President's Council in 2008 and that was 150 minutes a week of aerobic activity, moderate intensity aerobic activity um, every week and in divided doses. So a good recommendation is 30 minutes a day, five days a week, walk, bike, uh, swim, do something aerobically. And you said if they couldn't do that, that they could do also 75 minutes of more active? Right, and so the recommendations include more vigorous activity uh, with, with a greater intensity, compensating in part for the reduced amount of time, and so the recommendation there would be uh, 75 minutes a week of something that is more intense, such as jogging. So either walking 30 minutes a day or some other activity, 30 minutes a day, five days a week, or something more intense for a total of 75 minutes. So that'd be like 15 minutes a day of more intense exercise. Uh, I can tell that you're someone who wants to be efficient in what you do, yes. And um, the other points that you said, anything else that you would suggest to people who want to lower their risk of Alzheimer's disease? I think there are several things that one ought to consider. There is a strong association between cognitive engagement and risk reduction. So staying mentally active, active, I'm not sure that one needs to spend a lot of money in specialized computer programs, but if one enjoys doing that, then that's perfectly fine. But things like crossword puzzles, reading a good book, engaging in active conversation, I think all those things engage the mind. And the suggestion is that these kinds of things will affect the threshold for dementia emerging in the presence of Alzheimer's pathology, so that's worth doing. Um, probably good nutrition will play a role. Whole fruits and vegetables, five servings a day is the usual recommendation. Um, the the uh, jury is out and things like um, omega-3 fatty acids, but I think it is reasonable to eat fatty fish two or three times a week, fish like tuna, salmon, sardines, and so forth. All those things are probably good for the brain. And a couple of no-nos you said, for instance, the substances like uh, cigarettes and even obesity, I think you mentioned. So obesity would fall into the category of a vascular risk factor and there is an association between midlife obesity and Alzheimer's disease risk later in life, so that would be a no-no. 
And cigarette smoking, of course, um, bad for a lot of things, but also bad for the brain, including a strong association with Alzheimer's disease risk. So if you get out and do your exercise, you're going to help your obesity, you probably won't want to smoke, and you will lower your risk of Alzheimer's disease. All those are good things. Thank you so much. Thank you.